The Accidental Entrepreneur is brought to you with the help of our sponsor, A. Weber, the world's leading small business email marketing automation service provider. Since 1998, A. Weber has helped more than 1 million small businesses and entrepreneurs through its suite of web-based email marketing, automation tools, and education. A. Weber, the best option when it comes to marketing your business. The podcast is also brought to you by the Alternative Board. Since 1989, the Alternative Board, or TAB, has been one of the leading peer advisory and business coaching organizations for independent business owners and CEOs across the world. By facilitating peer advisory boards, private one-on-one coaching, and strategic planning services, TAB helps business owners improve their businesses in ways that change their lives. And be sure to connect with our affiliate sponsor, GSM Growth Agency. They're boosting e-commerce businesses to six and seven figures in revenue and cover everything from ads and social media influencers to making your website better. GSM Growth Agency focuses on taking businesses from startup success to bigger success, going above and beyond to make sure growth sticks around. They're all about cool ideas, lasting partnerships, and making your mark in the e-commerce world. And be sure to support the podcast by ordering some logo merchandise from our online store. Listen to all of our sponsors' commercials later in this episode and follow their links in the show notes to learn more about their products and services. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I am very excited because I have a special guest today, uh, father and son team. I, years ago, I used to work with my dad. He's since passed away, but it's always special relationship between a father and a son, and they're doing some fantastic stuff with their business and helping a lot of people. So we're going to get John and Mark on the show in a minute. If you are listening on your favorite podcast directory, be sure and leave us a five-star review. And if you're watching us on YouTube, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and like us so we can keep bringing really, really cool and special guests like we have today. So let's get on with today's show. The information provided in these episodes is for entertainment purposes only. It is not a guarantee of success or to be construed as advice of any kind. You should always seek advice from local licensed professionals before making any decisions. The dictionary defines an entrepreneur as a person who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. People often start a business without much choice, perhaps due to a job loss or just being dissatisfied at work, and they come up with an idea they just know can be successful. They become entrepreneurs by accident. That is to say their success or failure happens by accident, not with intention. My name is Mitch Beinhacker. I'm a corporate attorney and a business advisor. You're listening to The Accidental Entrepreneur, my podcast about how to achieve success on purpose, not by accident. Join me along with our monthly guests where we share our knowledge and help you get a hold of your business. And now on to today's episode. All right, guys. So Mark and John, Mark's the dad, John's the the son. If you're just listening, you're not watching us on YouTube. Uh, thanks for coming on. And I know you guys were, you'll tell us me, tell me about it in a minute, but I know you guys are in Harrisburg. You were given a presentation and speech last night, right? So you got up for me. Can't thank you enough. So tell me what, before we get into you guys and what you're doing, what were you doing last night? Who were you speaking to? Well, first, Mitch, um, thanks for having us on the podcast. I'm excited. And, and the what? entrepreneurs in the audience, that's our tribe. Right. <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, we were down last night. We gave the keynote address. Uh, for an event for a United Cerebral Palsy of Central Pennsylvania. John, nice. John and I do a lot of um, public speaking, a lot of keynote speaking, and, and travel the country doing that. So yeah. uh, it was neat being able to do it last night. It was a great, uh, great crowd. And you wowed people. You you had them <laughs> laughing and crying. I yeah. tell you, you have to stop making people cry. Um, <laughs> I, saw, I saw from your bio, you guys done some TEDx talks too, right? We've done a pair of TEDx talks. Um, nice. You know, it's ranged from I don't know five thousand people at a Microsoft conference in Las Vegas. Yeah. To a special education PTA, it might be ten people. Right. Um, of course, it varies. You know, you, um, you generally when we're speaking, it's I would group it in three categories: um, yeah. business owners, policymakers. And for them, we're really talking about the power of um, hiring people with differing abilities uh-huh. and advocating for them. Yeah. We speak with a lot of entrepreneurial groups, including at colleges and universities. 
And with them, it's yes, we, we talk about hiring people with different abilities, but it's also creating a business with a purpose and, and the impact that your business can have. Sure. And then the third group, and this was similar to who we spoke with last right. night. Yeah. It's parents, families, um, a, social service agencies, working with people with different abilities. And for them, it's really, let's show examples of success. Let's yeah. offer them encouragement and hope. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the idea of social entrepreneurship. I think it should be part of everyone's you know, business, everybody has a cause and something that's dear to their heart and some issues, you know, challenges in life. And we should all give back. That's kind of what makes the world go around, you know? Well, I'd suggest that it's the best way to do business. Yeah. Um, kind of the big picture view you know, that I have right. Milton Friedman back in the 1960s wrote an op-ed piece in the Times that said businesses or companies have one obligation. And that is to their shareholders. Of course. And that took root. Right. I would suggest that's where things went awry. I would agree with you. That, in fact, we have an obligation to all of our stakeholders. Right. Our employees, our customers, our community, the environment, and yeah. our shareholders. And when you take care of all of your stakeholders, your business is more resilient and thrives more. Right. The UN has a lot of statistics about those organizations that have committed to the uh, SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals at the UN, yeah. have higher profit margins. Of course. Look, you take, you take the companies away and the people are still there. You take the people away, there's no companies. So right. Say, it can't, are on their own. It can't be just lip service. We right. succeed only because of the people we get to work with. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. 100%. You get that I, all I the time, that. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's talk about, and you guys can introduce yourself, you know, on the, on the show um, about, you know, like John, your journey yes. coming out of high school and college and, and finding what you wanted to do and seeing that there wasn't a lot of opportunities. And why don't you start with that story? First, introduce yourselves a little bit and then we can. So, I, I, I start. Um, my name is John. He's my partner, my, my dad, Mark. Uh, he, I I he doesn't want to be smart of his name. He's a Mark Askronin. Right. Mark right. Askronin. We don't want to be smart to the other Mark yeah. Cronins, right? right? There's a lot of Mark Cronins. I think I went to high school with three of them. <laughs> okay. Right. John, What's our business? Our business is, is John Christian Sox, and our mission is very happiness. So um, I'll introduce John a little bit so you get to know him. Yes, Dad. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur. Yes, I am. You are now a sock tycoon. Yes, I am. Owner of the world's largest sock store. Yes, yeah. yes, I am. I'm sock, a sock tycoon. You're a public speaker. I am. I'm speaking now. You are. Um, you'd see, you're, you donate a lot of money. That makes you a philanthropist. Yes, I am. You've been in the Special Olympics for 22 years. Huh? That makes you an athlete. Yes, I am. <laughs> Compete in, John. You host an online dance party, so you're a dancer. I am a dancer. <laughs> you're, you're a good brother. I am a good brother. A good friend. I ain't, good, I ain't a good friend. You don't have a girlfriend now, but how do you introduce yourself? I'm 27, I'm single, and I ain't yet a boy. And you're eligible. <laughs> well, you travel the world. I'm sure there's a lot of women who are chasing you around. Uh, yes, they are. In every port, right? Um, yes. And what, so what you, is what is what do you compete in in the Special Olympics? What's your um, I play basketball, uh -huh. track and field, nice soccer, and oh, snowshoe. Oh, snowshoeing! And okay. in fact, on Sunday, Mitch, what are you yeah. doing Sunday? So, this Sunday, I got something a polar plunge. Doing a polar plunge for the polar, Special Olympics. The polar bear club? No, but the Special Olympics organizes polar plunges to raise money. Where so, oh, it's going to be cold. This one's going to be in Huntington on Long Island, but you've been doing that for 10 years. Right, right, right. I did. live out there, yeah. But, but here's the thing, Mitch. Yes. John is all of those things, and he has Down syndrome. Yes, ah. I am. I, I have Down syndrome, Down syndrome, and nothing coming back. Right. Not, right. And the Down syndrome is part of John, but it doesn't define him, and it right. doesn't limit him. Right. Uh, clearly, he does more than I do. I don't have Down syndrome. He does more than I do. <laughs> A lot more. All right, good. And you, John, you have some siblings? You have a brother or 
Um, yes, you do. I, I, I have a two, I two younger, I, I, I have two brothers. I have one and younger one. You don't have a younger brother. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it's right. Patrick and Jamie. Jamie's Jamie younger than younger Patrick. Patrick. Okay. J- Patrick is eldest. Because if you had a younger brother, I got to talk to your mom. John's the youngest of the three. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I am the youngest one, and um, I have a, uh, I have a sister in law. And sister. Oh, okay. So one of the boys is married, and yeah, like they're not tycoons. Just John. John, you're the only tycoon. He, he's the only celebrity tycoon. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right, John. So tell us a little bit. You, we talked before when we first met about why you started the company, and you know, and how you uh, you couldn't find a job that you liked, so you said you'd do it. So tell us the story. Well, Mitch, you know, it's, you, you refer in your intro to the accidental entrepreneur. Right. That's a little bit here. So yeah. our story starts back in the fall of 2016. Um, okay. And it starts in, in a small log cabin in the woods. No. No. No, no. Okay. <laughs> it starts on suburban Long Island in the right. town of Huntington. I told you my cousins live out there. Right. So we're and, there a lot. And where were you? Um, I was I, I was at Huntington High School. I was going to be my, my last year's school. If okay. you have a disability, you can yeah. stay in the school system Longer, to either right. graduate or turn 21. Got it. Okay. So that was going to be John's last year. And okay. like everybody else, you were trying to figure out what aging. comes next. Yeah. Right? What, so what were you looking at? I look at, I look at job, program, and school. I okay. can't find crap that I don't like. Okay. There's just not enough options out there. Um, you know, there's like some social service programs, but they're like daycare. This is together. You put labels yeah, and, on it. It's just keep and, it. It's not real. Work. And, and, you know, the reality is only one in five people with a disability are employed. Yeah. But John here is a natural entrepreneur. Obviously. Yeah, I am. Right? Yeah. You didn't see a job you wanted. What do you say? Uh, I said I want to make one. Yeah. Right, our own company. Right, that's that's what entrepreneurs do. They see problems and they turn them into opportunities. So, Mark, you tell me? Mark, you're the dad. What did you What did you say, John? Are you crazy? Well, it is no, called you, crazy socks. But well, what did you tell me? I I told my dad I'm gonna be busy with him and nice father time being together. Oh, which perfect. is pretty cool. Right? That. right, you know and. You you heard I have three sons. This is one I can work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, but now, you know, the entrepreneurs you out in the audience, you know, entrepreneurs have lots of ideas. Lots of ideas. They're not all good. of them are good ideas. A lot, yeah. of them, a lot of them are not good ideas. Or they're good <laughs> ideas, but they don't get executed, whatever. Not what they get. So what, so there we were, we were going to start a business together. Right. John had a lot of ideas. What was one of them? Yeah, give me some of the ideas. Yeah, one of them is a food truck. I have an idea for the yeah. movie called Chef. It, it, it's uh, um, I, I'm a father's son bonding over a food truck. Where you so, could like, cook food and be mobile. And then so what kind of food was it going to be? You didn't know? Oh, we, we were having all sorts of fun coming yes. up with what we might That's make sure. and where, yeah. where we would put it. Yeah. But we, we ran into a problem. Oh, we okay. can't talk. Yeah, we can't talk. <laughs> but then. Well, why should that stop you? But okay. Right, right before Thanksgiving, okay. John had his eureka moment. Brilliant idea. Yes, he did. I, I, I said, I want to sell crazy socks. Why socks? Yeah, why I socks? Fun, be colorful, it's creative. It's always let me be me. Okay, John. Right. John, what made you think of socks? Were you putting socks on your feet one morning and you said, wait, we could sell socks? Or did you see them in a store or in, on a TV or something? Um, actually, um, I, do, I see uh, I see uh, a store well, in a Kip Cod in Massachusetts. Oh, in Kip Cod, okay. But John had worn these crazy socks his whole life. He liked them, yeah, we right. We used to drive around looking for them. Yeah, my so son. So when he said that, yeah, it yeah. was... Okay, if other people, if you like them that much, surely other people would too. We could find those people. Right. Yeah, there's a whole industry of those socks. Okay. So at that point, we eschewed the traditional uh, business plan. 
I've okay. put plenty of those together. Right. I've evaluated okay. those. All together. That's smart. All entrepreneurs listening, they should work on a business plan when they want well, to. Well, actually, we skipped it. We oh, said at that point. We said let's go the lean startup route. Okay. Let's get something up and running, quick and yeah. dirty, and customers will let us know. Okay. So Good way to test, right? You already had the name. Yeah, I got a name. I do a lot of tech company idea. The idea would sell online. So we built a website on the Shopify platform. Okay. We got a little bit of inventory. So you bought some different patterns of socks. Right. You know, we found some there. suppliers. And, okay. and that was interesting because suppliers didn't want to sell to us because we had no customers. They right. wanted us to have customers. A thousand socks at a time. So you had a, we had a control of you to sell to us. Yeah. And, and we were bootstrapping. And, and once we got asked by a student, you know, what exactly does bootstrapping mean? Yeah. Well, it means you have no money. Right. And, and you've got to make little resources. Yeah. Right. So the only marketing we did. Socks from the beginning? Yes. Okay. And the only marketing we did, we set up a Facebook page. Okay. I would take out my cell phone and we made videos. And, and just, who do you think would win those videos? I am. I talk about socks. I have socks, socks, more socks. Yeah, because you're the star. And yes. in fact, as we're recording this, you know, yeah. it is the day before our seventh anniversary. Nice. Because what right. day did we open? Uh, we, uh, we opened on uh, Friday, September 9th, 2016. December 9th, okay. And we didn't know, you know, so tomorrow we're having a big party where you throw open our warehouse and have a, nice. a pop-up shop and invite okay. people in. But when we started, we didn't know what to expect. And that first day, we got 42 orders, which felt okay. like a flood of orders. And most of them were local, which made right. sense, right? Yeah. He's in Huntington High School. That's where we lived. We had temporary office space. Right. Now, how many but, pairs of socks did you have at that point? We had 30 different socks when we started. Okay. Um, and how did we deliver those, most of those first orders? Our home table feeds, we get red boxes, and I put yeah. a sock in, uh, in, in a box. I put, I, I, I put a zigzag in the arrow every package, and I put a candy in the kids. So every package got this thank you note from John. Right, I saw candy. that. Candy. Right. We loaded up the car, drove around. And right. you knocked on doors delivering socks. Yes, they did. How the customers respond? I, I, I did love the sock. I, I, I take a picture with me and a nice. customer. Yeah. You uh, and show it for the meal. Was I get that spread. Right. So we, you could do that when you only have 42 socks to deliver. Right. right. We, we, we had customers ordering again just to get John to come back to their door. Right. Whole families were waiting. And okay. there were from some funny moments, right? It was just the two of us. Yeah. So there would be nights we'd be out after ten o'clock at night, and John's knocking on doors. Right, like, just John with your socks. Yeah, shoot me. <laughs> so, um, but by the end of two weeks, you know, by okay. the end of that month, but it was really two weeks. We had shipped four hundred and fifty-two orders. Not just local we, at that point. Uh, well, we were shipping at that point around the country, and were you know because people saw us and they spoke to their cousin and right. um, spread. So we knew at that point we had something. Yeah. We didn't know how large it would grow. We didn't know how fast. Right. But at that point we knew now we can lay in a business. and really develop the business. Okay. And, and so today, how many different socks do we have? We have 4,000 different kinds of socks. 4,000? 4,000. We have That's more. Items in inventory. 4,000 different patterns. Yes, we have more choices than anybody else, which means John owns the world's largest sock store. Yes. We, we are the one stop for socks. You can get whatever you want. Um, so you must do with multiple manufacturers. I mean, not one manufacturer has a thousand patterns, right? We now have a, a strategic partner that manufactures socks for us, but Got we it. carry socks from, I think, 37 different uh, designers, suppliers. Yeah, um, makes sense. Okay. But we've grown. We've shipped now 440,000 packages to 88 different countries. Okay. Um, though, if we get an order between our office and home, what are you doing? I still do home, home delivery. Still doing home so delivery. By local, they still get a special visit by John. John will not wind up knocking at your door. Nice. Um, 
we've I'm been able to create from you guys. You go to their house. And if, <laughs> we, we've been able to create 34 jobs and 22 of those are held by people with differing abilities that work for you here in hunting, not here. In hunting. Yes. Well, our office, our, our office world, or, you know, world headquarters, world, world headquarters is now in Farmingdale. Okay, um, well, that's close by there. Yeah. But, uh, and we've now donated over seven hundred thousand dollars for our charity partners. Very, oh, went up because from your bio, um, it's fifty. Well, we, you know, every day, every um, day, you get some more. You know, like right now, as we're recording it, it's December eighth. We're in the midst of our twelve days of giving. Yeah. So for the first twelve days of December, for every order, we donate a dollar to one of our charity partners. Very nice. Customers get to vote where that dollar should go. Right. Um, and the charity partner that gets the most votes gets a five thousand dollar bonus. Nice. Bonus. Nice. Well, um, that's all so important, right? Isn't it? Because it gives you a purpose for what you're doing, you're helping people. It's nice to make money and to enjoy your business, and that's important. But to really help people is what really makes. I, I, it makes me feel good. You, you know, you referred before to the you know the power of the social enterprise, and that's what we've created. Yeah. We have both a social and a business mission, and they feed off of each other. Right. Um, and and the social mission is very important, but don't get us wrong. We're, we're a for-profit. Of we want to make money. It turns you can't out. Help social, uh, you can't help the charities if you don't make money. That's right. Right. And, and we like to live indoors. Yeah, right. So, you know. You're, plumbing and electricity. Right. Right. Um, but I think every organization. Right. You have to know your purpose. You know, it's what Simon Sinek calls your why. Right. It's not what you do. Yeah. It's why you do it. Right. And you have to know your values. Right. And you know a value is real if you're willing to give up money to stick to it. Yeah. Because when things go wrong, and they you will. know they, they will. will go wrong. Right. Your, your purpose is your North Star. That keeps you moving in the right direction. Right. Because if you don't have a purpose, eventually it gets harder to get up in the morning and you don't like what you're doing. And it's, you know, it's hard. Right. It's, you know, one of the things, one of our pillars is, you know, make it a great place to work. And part of that is you want to offer people a mission yeah. worthy of their commitment. Right. Something bigger than ourselves, something yeah. that makes a difference. And it can't just be, we're going to make money. Right, because then they care about the company. They they care about what they do. Their mission, right? And it connects you. You know it. And businesses, it's one of the things where you know we're always pushing. Entrepreneurs solve the problems in the world. Yeah, which drives and, everything. Really, and does. a business can have such an impact. Yeah, I mean, so we have thirty four employees, but now. We're affecting their families, of course, and their communities. Yeah, you, know, you have this impact, and, and that's really a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it makes you feel good. Now, who? Let's talk about your different jobs. Like, who does what between the two of you? I mean, I know you have other people that do things, but John, what's your what's your responsibility? Well, what do you sum up? What are you? Um, I'm delivering socks to people's houses. I know you want to do that, but um, um, my I'm my responsibility. Well, you're the face of the business, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a face of the business. I work with you, uh, like, video. Uh, I'm, I'm you, I, I do videos. I do TikToks, speak engagement. All the promotional stuff. And, and I, I, yeah, I, I do design socks. You design some socks. And and I, do, I do podcasts. And I do... Um, like today. Uh, um... You do the tours. I, I do tours. I, I and I uh, take out garbage out. You take the garbage out at night, right? And I um, do that. You got to stay in touch. It's the two of us overlap. In we have kind of two fundamental responsibilities. Mm -hmm. One is to create the vision and the path, and then we go and we're the public face for the business. Right. The other. We're at the bottom of the org chart, and our job is to support our colleagues so they can do their best job possible. So we work, in that sense, we work for them. 
and jo- and Mark, you do all the internal stuff like you deal with the payroll and the employees and the bookkeeping and all that. Kind well, of stuff. I, I actually do very little. <laughs> we have yeah, people doing it now. We have really good people. And and this was critical for us. We have a strategic partner mm-hmm. because, you know, I, I knew nothing about making socks. Right. It's not like so you're knitting it yourself. We signed a. Uh, we, we have a strategic partner, a third generation family business that's been making socks for 60 years for department stores and brand names. Nice. That gave us the manufacturing heft and, and the financial stability. Um, right. Because in many ways, we're a marketing company. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're absolutely. A content company. Well, you started out selling other people's designs, but now you do make a lot of designs yourself that you have right. manufactured. Right? We have our. Our own line of, of socks, they're called J's, because everything gets named after John. Of course. Right? Um, yeah, John's yes, crazy. Right. <laughs> this is all his idea. John, this is all your idea. It's all your company. Right. It's, you know, and, and, and when we speak to the entrepreneurs in your audience, look at the power of this. Yeah. John had a simple idea. Let's go sell socks. Yep. And look what it's turned into. Simple ideas can be very, very successful and powerful and help you. Let's do this. I'm going to, we're going to take a little short break. I do have some sponsors. They pay me a little bit of money. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the challenges you guys have had. Maybe some crazy things that went happen that you had to solve. And we could talk and get into more of that. Does that make sense? Great. Great. All right. Hang in there. Here's a word from our sponsors. Looking to market and grow your business? Or perhaps you're just getting started and want to hit the ground running. AWeber is the best choice for online email marketing and automation of your business. From maintaining a subscriber list to drip campaigns and landing pages, AWeber gives you tools and integrations that make marketing easy and fun. As our partner and sponsor, we use all their tools to promote the podcast and market our law firm. AWeber, the best alternative for online marketing. For over 30 years, the Alternative Board, or TAB, has built a thriving community of forward-thinking CEOs and business owners who want to radically improve their companies. Through unique combinations of one-on-one business coaching, participation in monthly TAB board meetings with other non-competing owners, a suite of strategic tools and customized strategic planning workshops, TAB membership can deliver greater strength to your business and a better work-life balance for you and your family. All packaged in a streamlined and affordable service that the people at TAB invite you to try risk-free. Are you struggling with managing advertising due to a lack of time or expertise? Perhaps you're facing challenges in scaling ads for your store. Are you feeling lost when strategies have no success? GSM Growth Agency is your reliable partner in overcoming these business challenges. Feel the impact of collaborating with a team dedicated not only to short-term goals, but also to building long-term partnerships and achieving sustained success. Embark on an exciting journey to redefine the possibilities of e-commerce and create a legacy of unparalleled excellence. Take decisive action now. Follow their link in the show notes to receive a complimentary audit of your Shopify store conducted by a GSM expert. Propel your e-commerce game to new heights with GSM Growth Agency. Follow the link in the show notes to learn more about all of our sponsors. And now back to our show. All right, guys. Um, yeah, there's the, the, our new sponsor, GSM Growth Agency, they're online, guys. So if you guys are selling online and you're doing 10, 20, 50,000 a month, they'll take you to 500,000 a month. They're yeah, crazy. Well, it's, it's helpful having the right partners. And I heard the promotion for Tab. I know uh, my partner is a member of TAB and loves it, and it's really been helpful for him. Yeah, the local guy in uh, Central Jersey, John, he's our, he's John too. He's he's a sponsor, and I go and speak to their groups, and it's a great organization. It's always good to have other advisors. So that's a question I want to get into. Do you guys have other partners in the business who are, who invested in the business and are owners of the business, or just the two of you? Well, it's the two of us and our strategic partner. Um, So we share ownership. That makes sucks. But we don't have outside investors. Um, okay. But it is important to have others so that you can talk to. For me, I'm part of an organization called the Entrepreneurs Organization, EO. Yeah, yeah sure. And EO has been very great helpful. Yeah, great organization. Plus, 
back in 2017, mm -hmm. we um, participated in a business accelerator program called uh -huh. Mass Challenge. Okay. Um, happened to be run out of Boston, but they run something out of Austin, out of Switzerland, out of Israel. But it's called um, Mass Challenge because it started in Massachusetts? Yes. Got um, it. Uh, and we still have work with two mentors from there nice. that have been very helpful to us. Right. You needed yeah. mentors, advisors. So they're like your little advisory board type. Yeah. Right? You need, you know, particularly if you're the entrepreneur and you're running that organization. Yeah. You, you know, you want to build a great team, but nobody in that team knows what it's like to sit in that chair. Right. So it's helpful to have other people. Yeah. And it's also helpful to have people from outside your organization that can offer different perspectives. Sure. Well, I'm sure things changed, right? From this time when you started and you delivered 42 socks, pairs of socks, to now where you have 4,000, you said, to, uh, patterns and 35 employees and the whole thing. It's a different organization, right? It's a different skill set. You have to grow and um, frequently – the person that can get the thing started is not the person who will take it to the next level. Right. You're, You're right. right. It happens a lot of times. And the people that don't recognize that sometimes have struggles. Right. And you have to recognize when you, it's very hard to see ourselves. Yeah. You have to recognize what your strengths are and where you need help. Yeah, very much um, so. And sometimes we only learn that after we fail. Hard way. Yeah, I know. But you should stick to what you guys are good at. You're really good at promoting the business and driving things. And, and you know, John's out there speaking to everybody and getting them all excited and motivating them. Are you guys on the road a lot speaking? Um, fairly often. Um, okay. You know, last week, you know, so today we're in Pennsylvania. Last week, we were in southern Jersey at uh, um, an event with TD Bank. Uh -huh. um, but we also do things virtually. We spoke Wednesday with IFF, a chemical company that's based in Delaware. Okay. Um, um, in January, we're going to Nashville. Nashville's in a Indiana. great city. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. We've Indiana. been down there to Nashville before. Where's yeah. that? Indianapolis you're going to? We're going to Indiana. I don't think we're going to Indianapolis. Uh, no? We're going to um, San Antonio. I right? think so. So John likes to travel, I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, but, you know, still the folk, we're able to do it because we have a great team. Yeah. Um, you leave the office and they run the business, right? And we're focused on things. Well, that's, that's part of it. You know, we, we can get into this, right? Or yeah. We have a mission. What's our right. mission? Spread happiness. Spread and happiness. Yeah. Well, you're doing and, a good job of that. And what do you say are the keys to happiness? I, I, it's correct you and your father. Gratitude, do for others. The more yeah. we can do for others, the better off we are. And you feel better, right? The more you do for others, yes. the better you right. feel. And Absolutely. take care of other people and things will, will work out. A hundred percent. It always does. And then we built the business on five pillars. Okay. Inspiration and hope. If you're in the hope, give it back. Fun product you can love. Make a partner. And make it personal. I like make it, it. I make it quickly to work. So the last one was the last one to be added. Right. Make it a great place to work. Right. Because when it's just the two of us, you don't think about that. Right. But if we want to spread happiness, we have to start at home. Yeah. It's got to be happy where you are with everybody, right? And and we have kind of five pieces to that. You know, the first we already mentioned. Offer people a mission worthy of their commitment. Yeah. Two, make sure everybody knows why his or her job matters. There's no cog in the machinery. There's right. no make work. Everybody is serving that mission. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend who has a business, and he was like, oh, Mark, come on. That's a lot of malarkey. I know. A lot of people overlook and, the whole mission statement pillars and, of their business, and they don't and realize I'm like, well, business. wait a second. Yeah. It you have somebody whose job isn't essential to what you're doing. Why are they on your payroll? Right. 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 And then the third part of that with, you know, make it a great place to work, put yeah. people in a position to succeed. Yeah. Don't ask them to do what they can't do and give them the support that they need. Right. We're a small business. We don't have endless resources. 
Of course but not. if Nick, our webmaster, needs a particular tool, why don't we get it for him? Right. right? And then four, say thank you. Recognize the work that people do. Right. Grateful, gratitude. Look at that. And yeah. then the fifth, the fifth part is stay the hell out of the way. Right. Let, Let people them. do their job. Yeah. Give them that autonomy. No, I think pe for people listening, you can learn a lot from the things that you just said, because a lot of people don't get it. And then employees don't buy into their mission and they don't treat it like it's their own business. And all those kind right. of things fall out of right. line instead of falling into line. Right, you've got to, you know, Mike Tomlin, the Pittsburgh Steeler coach. Right, the coach. Says, we, we want volunteers, not hostages. Right. You know, you, you know it's- Yeah, some people don't like going to work. They're like, why do I do this, you know? But that's- Sounds like a great place to work. You know, you, you do that, the making it personal, we're very much interested in developing relationships as opposed to just chasing transactions. Yeah. We want to wow our customers. Right. So from day one, you know, you know the package, you get that thank you note, yes. the candy. I mean, think, think about this. Touches, little, little personal touches. You, you, you get a package from us. It, you get branded packaging, so it's bright and colorful on the outside. Hmm. You open it up, you get your socks. You get the thank you note from John, and the flip side of that is the story of John's crazy socks on our giving back. You get some candy, mm -hmm. and on the packing slip, you see the name and the picture of the person who picked your order. You're not just getting socks. Right. That's, that's a whole, that's a dose of happiness. That's an experience. Yeah. So we create, we're always looking to create that with our customer, you know, that they're the philanthropist by buying from us. They're enabling us to give back. They're enabling us to hire people with different abilities. And everybody has to buy in on that. So yeah. I mean, here's an example. Um, you know, we put the candy in. Well, yeah. okay. still one day, one of our happiness packers comes to us and says, you know, we sell socks for diabetics, and we're shipping them candy. Chocolate. Candy. What's wrong with that picture? Hey, so now, now we have a supply of sugar-free candy. Right. So if you order those socks for diabetics, we send you sugar-free candy. So you ask them, that's one of the questions, are you diabetic? No. If, no. if you're buying diabetic socks. There oh, are, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. If we get an address that's on a military base, we have a different package that goes and says nice. this. Yeah, those it's, are all nice touches. And you never get there, but you keep finding new ways of doing it, and yeah. everybody has to contribute. Yeah, I yeah. think that, you know, some people would say, Mark, well, we're just selling socks. I mean, what do we got to do all this stuff for? But that's not what you're doing. Well, here's the thing. It's the product. You can make be happy with anything. You guys probably could make this business with anything you sold. We, we, you know, we we skip the business plan to start, but we wind up doing it, and That's we've true. done the competitive analysis. Right. We have counted, Mitch. There are exactly one gazillion sock companies. Right. Right. <laughs> if all we're doing is selling socks, yeah, we are lost. Doing. Yeah. What do you say? Ours are better than yours, right? No. Yes, yes, they don't right. smell like yours. You know, you right. gotta, you gotta have something, right? Right. But then, you know, that kind of comes to that third pillar of 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 socks, the and products that people can love. Yeah, you got to know what you're selling and why you're selling it, but you also you got to deliver the goods. Yeah. So, you know, we we are. Basically, an e-commerce company. We've expanded. We can talk about that, but that means we have to have a great website. Yeah, we have to have great selection. Yeah, the products have to be great. We have right. over thirty thousand five-star reviews. Nice, and the service yeah. has to be great. Right, you got to have the goods. Yeah, because you can do all the marketing and all the yapping you want to do, but if you have a crappy product or crappy have a service, experience, right, you're sunk. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you guys and, recognize that. And then there's the giving back. And that's baked into everything we do. And and you've referred to this. Yeah. It's it's not enough to just sell stuff. Right. You want to give back after a while. You just lose purpose. So we started 
and you know, from day one. We pledge five percent of our earnings to a special, a special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I am a Special Olympics. Yeah. yeah. If there's no Special Olympics, there's no John's Crazy Socks. Right. Right. So we start there, but we've gone on to create products that celebrate causes and raise awareness and raise money for those causes. So what were the first awareness socks we created? Um, I first talk about how we, how we created it, a Donald Trump awareness socks. And who designed those socks? I did. I did my design. Right. Um, right. So, so what, we what made those Down syndrome awareness sock. What what's on it? I uh, it, it says three part twenty one. Because and there's a little story behind that. Yeah, let's hear the story. It's January of 2017. We're just okay. getting started. Right. And that's when we find out nobody buys anything in January because they spent all their money at the holidays. Yeah. And we discover that people wear crazy socks to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. Uh, and when's World Down Syndrome Day? It is March 21st. Now, okay. March 21st. You would have thought we knew that ahead of time, but we're okay. not that smart. Right. So at that point, we're only selling other people's socks. We go out looking for a Down syndrome themed sock. Nobody made one. I would think not. And what do you say? I, I said I want create one. I want make one. So we'll make our own. He designed it. <laughs> yes. And then we called up the National Down Syndrome Society and the local organization ACDS and said, "Look, we're going to sell these socks, and we're going to send you money from every pair we sell." And they said, "Who are you?" You know. What I mean? <laughs> But, you know, now we work closely with them and it's an experience for the customer because when they're buying that, they're celebrating Down syndrome. They're celebrating somebody they know. And it's important that and some of that is going back to support that cause. Right. So now we have a whole line of Down syndrome products and autism themed products. And we work with North Shore Animal League America. And we have pet rescue socks and we have, you know, police uh, tribute socks that raise money for the PAL and firefighter tribute so socks. to a lot of charities, a lot yes. of different charities yeah. now. And we report on that every month. Um, and But that's a promise we make to our customers. It's not the old patriarchal model of, well, let's wait to the end of the year and see much how much money we yeah, have. Right. Right, right. This is right up front, and you're participating in that as a customer. Very good. Well, I'll make sure your guys, this episode's going to be released sometime in March. So I'll make sure it's the week of Down Syndrome Awareness Day. Awesome. World Down Syndrome Day. It's Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this year we've made, we're working with National Down Syndrome Society and Down Syndrome International to make the official sock of World Down Syndrome. Oh, I've been excited, Dad. Right? Um, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. But the, the, the most important pillar in our business is, is inspiration and hope. We want to show the world what people with differing abilities can do. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we start that's with John, right? Yeah. You have Down syndrome. Yes, I am. But we don't put you in the back. No, I, I'll be in the front. I, right. I am a, a fan of a, a business and a company. We, yeah. More than half of our colleagues have a differing ability. And then we create content. Yeah. So you know, we like have 245,000 Facebook followers. and. Nice. I think you're up to 65,000 TikTok followers. Oh, I love dancing. Um, so we're always showing, look what people can do. Nice. We, we host tours. We've had more than 2,000 people come through our facility on a tour. Okay. We host work groups. Uh, from, no, you said Farmingdale. In Farmingdale. Yeah, yeah. Now it's in Farmingdale. Um, we're in our third location. We keep growing, which is good. Good. Um, we, we host work groups from social service agencies and schools. Because okay. you want people to come in and see, oh, there are people like me who have jobs. I can get a job. Gives them motivation. We take on uh, speaking engagements. So, you know, we spoke about that before. We travel around the country. Now, virtually, we've spoken around the world. Yes, um, the word. Now, your pillars, who came up with those? The two of you? Did you ask your employees to be part of it? We did. Our employees have helped shape them. Okay. Because when you start, you as the leader get to start to shape the culture. Yeah. But as you grow, 
it's no longer just you. It belongs to everybody. Right. right. And everybody's going to shape. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. People you know, and you still have that key role as a leader. You're going to set the tone. Yeah. You, know, you've, you, you work with a lot of businesses. You know, you know the ones where the, the owner says, well, my door is always open. Right. Well, it may right. be, but, but don't yeah. dare go say anything. Right, of course. Or don't disagree. You know, right. um, it's it's important that people know they can tell me no. Yeah, they can say that's not a good idea. And they do it all the time. So, you know, that's a good sign. Yeah, um, you want you want their input and their involvement and their right, body, you, all that, time, whatever the terms are. But this yeah. is, it becomes all of a whole. Right. It, it's the excitement of working there. And, and, you know, here's some of the benefits. At a time of the big quit, right. where 4 million Americans are quitting their job each month, it was, they realize it's, how it's down now. Right. Now it's only 3.8 million a month. It's still a lot. Um, we've had some ups and downs. So there are times we've had to let people go for economic reasons. Yeah. But people don't leave. Um, well, that's because a, they're committed. They're, yeah. It's a good actually, sign. We have had one exception. I, I am entirely my fault. Right. We had somebody leave and it was all John's fault. <laughs> uh, Christy had been with us for six years. Yeah. Um, and she left and said it was because of John, but she left to become a special education teacher. Right. So we thought that was okay. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's okay. But now we've had people that we laid off come back. Yeah, um, right. Cause you're, because you're it's the work. Yeah, yeah. But now, it, so we talk about all the great things, right? The company's doing great. You're traveling around. You're speaking. You're sharing happiness. All these things. Let's talk about some of the challenges that you had, right? Because every business owner has challenges maybe some got messed up with inventory can you tell us some stories and how you overcame some of those things no you don't have enough hours um, <laughs> right. you know some of it is uh is comical like even the very first day yeah what time were we going to open are we going to be at the morning but what happened except our, our web crash this is all my dad's fault the, the website first... crashed because the webmaster, which was me at the time, screwed something up in the code. So we opened at three in the afternoon. Yeah, we did. And this then went to open and the site wouldn't come up. The, the site crashed. I right. had to re, redo things. To, yeah. And then on that, by the end of that Saturday, the second day, we only had a little bit of inventory. And we had this right. surge. Yeah. So we were running out of inventory. Right. Where are you going to get socks on a Saturday night? Not those kind of socks. Well, we White drove stuff. around. Yes, I don't know. We we drove around to every Kmart in Suffolk County, and just bought whatever we could. Patterns they had, so we could have some inventory to sell. Or yeah, that's you know, fun. The candy that's that's kind of our signature. We put candy in when yeah. we started. What candy were we putting in? A hundred kisses. Hershey's kisses. But they melt. They could melt, right? And, right, and then we hit the springtime, and we get that email from the woman in Florida. You may yeah. not want to send this trucker to the south. Right. Um, but there are also more serious things. In um, The good news was we bootstrapped and grew. Right. In our first two years, we had fantastic growth. Mm -hmm. And both times we made a profit. And it's hard to make a profit when you're growing. Very hard. But come 2019, I'm looking in the bank. I got no money. It's all in inventory, right? It's all in inventory and in infrastructure. Right. And then things came down. It wasn't bad, but, you know, we had an extraordinary year, our second year, um, and we ran out of money. Yeah. And by the end of that year, you know, I expected to come back at the holidays because we do 50% of our business at the holidays. I'm not sure. So I had spent the year looking for the right investors. Right. Um. Banks came in. Oh, we love what you do. We love the story. We love the growth. We love but, the profit. We're not going to put any money into you. Right. Um, we had investors coming in who basically wanted to buy the brand and shut us down. Right. Yeah, that's um, awesome. So by the end of the year, I remember meeting with a bankruptcy law firm, and they said, "Oh, you you need to declare bankruptcy. Just give us twenty five thousand dollars in cash." I'm right. help you. I'm like, guys, if I have $25,000. That meeting, right. Right. 
Right. But uh, after kissing a lot of toads, we found the right prince um, in a partner that manufactures socks, that knew right. that industry. Um, but those were some tough times. I had to let people go. And, um, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, so they're still your partner today, right? Yes. Um, now you didn't know that around the corner, the world was going to change. No, we signed. We signed the. We we first met in December, mid December. Right. We signed our agreement by the end of February. Now you've worked in the seal. That's very fast. Very fast. Yeah. We sign it, and then March fifteenth, we get hit in the head because here's a pandemic. Right. Um. And how do you deal with that? And that's where. You really have to know what you're about, what your values are. Yeah. Right. The pandemic was bad for our business. Yeah. Um, in the spring, we usually do pretty well, but a lot of it is driven by a lot of public events. Okay. Like and the isn't going media out. attention. Right. So we had already lined up six TV appearances around World Down Syndrome Day. Right. All of that got wiped out. Canceled. Of course. It cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So the first thing is we had to take care of our colleagues. Many of our colleagues were vulnerable. You know, John here, people with Down syndrome were not more likely to get the virus. But if they did, five times more likely to be hospitalized, 10 times more likely to die. Got it. So we had to take care of that. Yeah. Then okay, how can we adapt to the new circumstances? You move those tours online. You right. move speaking engagements online. Right. Speaking engagement is always better in person, but now it opens but, the world to us. Um, right. Right? Yeah. We, we make socks. We made healthcare superhero socks to thank frontline workers. Good and thought. that raised over $50,000 for the right. American, Cancer, uh, American Nurses Association. And a local hospital, Good Samaritan University Hospital. And then, well, what's new? Yeah. Well, we could make masks with our themes. And what's our mission? Uh, I spread happiness. How do you spread happiness if everybody's locked down? Right. Well, here's one way. John started an online dance party. Because what's better than bringing people together to dance for once a week? Right. And we started... A Facebook Live show, okay. the Spreading Happiness show, that during the pandemic was getting 40,000 people. It was nice. just a way to connect. Yeah. We weren't selling socks. We were spreading happiness. Right. Um, but if you know what you're about, if you know your values, yeah. those will help you get through those really hard times. Right. Well, I think that's really the key to this whole discussion, right? If you have values and you know your values and you know why you're doing everything, when it becomes difficult, because you said it before, it will. Oh, yeah. Well, then you, you can get through the hard times because you know why you're doing it, right? You know why you're going to work in the morning, mailing the socks, having a dance party. You're doing it for a reason. And if all we were doing then was selling socks, we would have been sunk. It would have failed and, and the pandemic right. would have crushed you guys. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So since we're coming up on an hour, it's been like 50 some odd minutes. Um, what kind of advice do you guys have if someone's out there and they may have challenges like John or they may not, they're not sure what they want to do. What are you, what's your advice about starting a business? Well, I'll start. Then you go. Yeah. Okay. One, just take action. We, we have an approach of ready, fire, aim. Right. Just don't do it, overthink right? things. Yeah. If you wait for the moment to be perfect, you will never get started. Yeah. You know, the, you, you, you probably know the story about Microsoft. Paul Allen is walking through Harvard Square, sees popular electronics, and on the cover is an article about this guy, who, a dentist in Albuquerque, who created the first home computer. He goes and finds his friend Bill Gates, who's a student at Harvard, who's playing poker when he finds him. Right. He says, Bill, look at this. Yeah. They drop everything. They write an operating system. And they fly to Albuquerque to convince this guy, let us do the operating system for your Get it on the computer. If Bill Gates had said, Paul, go away, come back, let me graduate, they would have missed it. Of course. 
the yeah. same story with Facebook. A lot so, of it's just action, right? We're, we're here with us. You know, here's an example. We hit the summer of 2017. We learned nobody buys socks in the summer. Right. What are we going to do? Well, one of the things, let's create a sock of the month club, a subscription. Not a unique idea in no. e-commerce. We put that together in a week. We set up the website. We got the inventory, figured out how to promote it. About four months later, one of our suppliers, who's mm -hmm. also a competitor, because they sell directly to the public, to consumers, started their own sock of the month. Club. Okay. And I got to talking to them. You know, tell me about it. And they said, oh, we've been working on this for a year and a half. Yeah. A year and a half? What the hell have you been doing? <laughs> what have you been doing? Well, you know, we had the committees. We had to do this. Well, by that time, we were on our third iteration. We had real customers. Right. And we had learned things that we would only learn by doing. Right. So, you know, I, there are two pieces out there. One, take action. Right. There are so many people who, you know, they're now 70 years old saying, oh, I had an idea to do this once. Did it, right. Go and do it. Entrepreneur, Mark, you can get a lot done in a short period of time. You it's have hard no excuses. The committee's right, exactly. Right. We, two of us are a couple of knuckleheads. Selling socks. Yeah, if we, we can are. do it, anybody can do it. Right? But and the other thing, believe. Yeah. Know what your convictions are and believe. And when people push back and you know, smart people come in and say, Oh, don't put the candy in your packages and don't put the note in, you know, just you'll lower your cost. Right. You gotta know what matters. Right, what exactly. Believe. And John still puts in notes in all the packages? Yes. And in I fact, we've yeah. evolved it now. You know, yes, they're copying, right my hand, obviously. but but we've evolved it so that you've heard of segmenting email. We segment our packages. So everybody gets the same basic ingredients. Right. But if this is your first order, you get one note. Oh. If it's your second order, you get a different note. Smart. If it's your third or fourth, you're a different one. And more than right. five, a different one. You're an ongoing note. customer. They want to keep them. And right. It so doesn't take much. You just keep right. paying attention. But right. You have advice for people? Yes, you do. Follow, follow your heart. Follow your dreams. Yeah. Work hard. Right. So you can do. You know, it's. I love it. John, when he came to me and said, Dad, we're going to go into business. Yes. For him, it was just matter of fact. Right. We're he just going to go do this. Right. right. We're going to sell socks. We're just going to go do this. Right. Um. There wasn't, oh, my God, you know, there, there, you know, you can think about grouping folks in two ways. One group are going to tell you all the reasons why something won't work or why right. it's hard or why you can't do it. They're the ones that never did anything. And then the other group are rolling up their sleeves and saying, okay, how right. do we get this done? What comes Not if, up? how. Yeah. Now, were you, were you less uh, enthusiastic about it? Were you like, John, what are you, we're crazy? We're going to do this? Well, by that point, I I was a full fledged entrepreneur, which means <laughs> I'm unemployable. Um, yeah. A lot so of I had had you know some other businesses. When he said let's go into business together, I thought that was a wonderful idea. Yeah. And as he was turning through his different ideas, a fun store. Yes. A food truck. Yes. I was like, eh. when he said we should sell socks. Without doing any research, without checking anything, I said, you know, you exactly. might have something there. Yeah, very good. Let's go. But that was also the idea of the of the lean startup. Let's go test it. Yeah. Well, that a lot of uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs skip that step. They don't test. They don't find out what their customer wants. I'm sure you guys are always tweaking and checking and questioning and right because you're always segmenting. No, no, you know. Uh, I was, you know, helping a, a friend who wanted to open a series of juice bars and okay. food stores, and they're going to hire ex-cons. And the idea was we're going to have one or two kind of central hubs and then these small places. And they're talking about all these leases and stuff. And I'm like, wait, wait, right. why don't we open one place? <laughs> right. Why don't you just get one up? That's the concept. And, and see, and yes. Build a really good business, and then you can decide whether you can open more locations, franchise, license, or maybe just keep your one location and keep growing it. Well, that's tough too, right? You have yeah. to 
Yeah, those um, kind of plays you need multiple. But still, you're right. People overthink. They overthink everything. They wait for all. What's the expression? They wait for all the lights to turn green. Yes. Before they head towards town, and it never happens. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So how? So okay. So we want to promote you guys. So what's the website? It's JohnsCrazySocks.com. Yes, I'll go to our, our website at JohnsCrazySocks.com. JohnsCrazySocks.com. And you're on Facebook and you're on TikTok. Are you we are on, on every platform? Just look every. for John's Crazy Socks. Okay. Um, if you want to contact us individually, I'm the only Mark X Cronin on okay. LinkedIn. Okay, good. Um, so I'd be glad to connect with folks there. Good. Um, and, you know, and understand that if uh, you buy from us, you're going to get great socks. We got 30,000 five-star reviews. Spread happiness and all that Anything stuff. you want, we're going to have for you. You know, John has it, right? Right. It's, it's like the Arlo Guthrie song. Yes. You can get, get anything, anything you, you want. want. But... Now it's John's crazy socks, not ours. Right, restaurant. You can get any kind um, of socks you want, but but you're going to help us employ people with different abilities. You're going to help us give back. You're going to help us spread happiness. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, thanks for coming on. Stick around, and we'll go to the closing credits. Okay. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Accidental Entrepreneur. Opening and closing music written and performed by Howie Moscovich and Made to Order Music. For information about Howie and his music services, please follow the link in our show notes. If you like the podcast, please tell others about us. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and most of the other podcast directories. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review and feel free to share our episodes on social media. If you have any questions or comments, ideas for the show, or you'd even like to appear as a guest, reach out to us by email at info at beinhackerlaw.com. The Accidental Entrepreneur is hosted by Mitch Beinhacker and produced by Beinhacker Law. If you'd like to learn more about our business and legal services, you can find us on social media or visit our website at beinhackerlaw.com. Thanks for listening, and be sure to subscribe to our feed to be notified of all future episodes.